the eAssist Dental Solutions Podcast. We are the nation's leader in outsourced dental billing. Our clients require highly skilled dental office managers that can consult with client offices. Welcome to the eAssist Dental Solutions Podcast. This is your host, Andres Quintana, and I am here in the Raleigh area of North Carolina. My goodness, this is episode 20, and I am so excited because I have the first repeat guest, Stephanie Fario, and she is all the way down in sunny Florida, and she is with us tonight, but I want to remind everybody that eAssist has made the Inc. 500 list of fastest growing companies, and it is for the second year in a row. And we are also proud of Dr. Anderson and the management team for doing all the great things that they're doing. Stephanie, how are you today? I'm well. How are you? Well, you know, I'm doing great. A little cold here in North Carolina, but is not a, as bad as people, you know, in the Northeast uh, with all the snow and everything. But I can't believe that uh, I have you on the line again. It, it just seems like yesterday that we were talking about dental claims and what's different nowadays. I, I have one question that I want to start with, and that's you came on board, you you settled in, you're doing some great things with, you know, everybody involved in, in the medical billing team. But what's changed personally? How has eAssist made your life, your home life, a little better? Can you tell us all about it? Sure. The biggest change is that my family and I have moved to Florida, which was a long-time dream of ours that we weren't able to do before because, of course, I was working in an office and it's very hard to interview for new positions from 500 miles away. So we were able to, after I onboarded with eAssist, pack up and move to somewhere where there is no snow, sorry about that, and (laughs) it's 80 degrees every day. Yeah. What, What part of Florida again are you in? We live 20 minutes outside of Disney. We live in Orlando. Oh, that's great. And the beauty is that you can do this kind of work and you can impact dental offices from your home, but you can impact dental offices technically really all over the world if you wanted to. Isn't that a fact? Exactly. Yeah. In fact, I think we have one of our team members that her husband was deployed and I think she's doing some work uh, remotely and that is amazing. So today we're going to talk about, you know, the medical billing side of eAssist which is so exciting. We always have to uh, consider these regular dental procedures and a lot of offices could benefit from knowledge of medical claims. What would offices benefit from with medical claim service? I think the patients really benefit. I think the office benefits through the patients. We take a look at the, the services overall, and I've run into this even in the offices that I work with on the dental billing side. Every once in a while, you have that patient come in who had an accident or maybe they have a medical condition and it's impacting their dental health. And you don't think that medical would be a place to file these claims, but it is. And a lot of patients have benefits on the medical side to help with their costs and the office's costs and help them accept treatment that they otherwise wouldn't do. Right. Because some of those procedures are the ones that are the obvious, you know, you know, some pathology with softened heart tissue injuries and also emergency trauma procedures. Are there other kinds of procedures that are covered under the medical umbrella? There are. We see on the, the medical billing team, we see a lot of dental implants. We see a lot of TMJ and TMD orthotic devices. We see a lot of sleep apnea appliances because it's unique. It's not a benefit of dental plans, but only a dentist can fit a sleep apnea appliance. So those need to go to medical and most dentists don't know how to build them. What would you say about patients that may be confused about claims that involve like, you know, scaling and root planning and any periodontal work, crown bridge implants, extractions? Is that part of a medical bill? It can be. It certainly can be. It all comes down to the root cause of why the patient needs the procedure done. We have a lot of patients that have required dentures or implant-supported dentures or even crowns and bridges because of extractions from cancer or radiation and chemotherapy treatment or HIV. 
there's a host of medical illnesses and symptoms out there that can contribute to you needing dental work. So it's really important to have a comprehensive health history. And really, when you're looking at that patient's treatment plan, think, would this be covered by medical? Is this something that we can submit and try to get this patient a benefit for? Because it's not just them having poor home care or poor oral hygiene. It's the root cause. The mouth is a part of the body, as hard as medical doctors try to separate it and and make dentists feel like it's not. It, It is. It's all connected. So your overall health does have an impact on your dental health. All right. So I'm getting really excited now about some of these topics, Stephanie, because in a dental office, as, as I'm often in, you know, we check in a patient and the patient hands you a medical card. And a lot of dental teams get really nervous about that dental card and they, they want to hand it back to the patient so fast, like, no, 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 this is the wrong card. When a patient checks in and hands you that card, should we make a copy of it and keep it on file? I definitely would. I would encourage, I mean, you you always want to ask the patient, obviously, if they hand you the medical card for their dental card, because not all dental services Correct. are going to be medical in nature. But the last thing you also want to do is have that patient come in for emergency treatment and have them worry about fumbling to find their medical insurance information. So if you just gather all of that up front, you're already gathering records. You might as well copy the patient's medical card and have that on file should you ever need to file a medical claim for that patient. And I'm so glad we're talking about this because I myself have done that. I've taken that medical card and given it right back because I don't know exactly what to do with it, right? Don't you think that a lot of dental offices do the same thing or am I the only one? Uh, I used to do the same thing. Right. Honestly, when I when I was first in dentistry, before I worked for surgeons and before I worked for orthodontists that did sleep appliances, I... I would have the same anxiety. They would hand me a medical card and I would, no, 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 no. This is your medical card. I don't need this. But now knowing what I know and knowing that not only can procedures be covered by the medical, but also the overwhelming number of dental carriers that are now requiring that dentists submit things like wisdom tooth extractions to medical first to make sure there is no benefit to reduce their responsibility. I always encourage, especially oral surgeons, periodontists, to get a copy of that medical card. It's a lot easier to get that information up front than to try to call the patient later and track them down. And then this is the beauty of having eAssist on your team because now you don't have to worry about, you know, getting all this training because the truth is, is if the staff doesn't know what to do with these medical uh, cards, what to do with the uh, medical codes, then it's kind of useless. It, 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 it wastes a lot of time. You know, everybody's going to be stressed out because you automatically think, okay, well, if we don't have the right information, these claims are not going to get paid. Having e-assist, having Stephanie and the team knowing exactly what to do, it means that your dental office, your dental staff, all they have to do is everything that we've been talking about in the first 19 episodes is that they get to work with patients and they don't have to worry about knowing at all. Is that true? That is true because we actually, the medical billing team is separate from the dental billing team, but we are still the same family at eAssist. We still talk to each other. We still engage with each other every day. So if you have both services set up on your account and your staff is greeting the patient and taking copies of the cards and making sure everything is right there in the chart and you have the occasion that a medical claim pops up, if you already have the medical billing service, your dental billing team can get that claim over for you without your staff taking any extra steps. Also think about, uh, on that note, think about right now if we take all, all of the things that you're talking about and we have to send all of these dental offices all over the country to get trained properly on how to handle the medical claims. Think about all the time that they have to spend doing that. And not just one person should know how to do it. The whole team should know how to do it. And so you come in, you take all the stress away. Can you tell the audience just a little bit about why should an office use medical claim services? Sure. I think an office should use the medical claim service because there's always there's always a place for it in any dental office. 
and it alleviates your team having to follow up with the patient for medical coverage or follow up with the patient and say, hey, we don't file medical claims, but in order to get your dental claim processed, we need you to fill out this form and send it in and track it down and follow it up and make sure that you get us back the EOB, by the way, or your dental isn't going to pay anything. Having the medical billing service saves you that from A to Z. All you're doing is you're sending us the patient's demographics and a list of the procedures that you've done. And you don't even have to do that. Your dental billing team can do that through eAssist. We take care of evaluating it. We take care of assigning the CPT and ICD-10 coding. We take care of submitting it. We take care of following it up all the way through a finalized EOB. You don't have to touch it again until... Actually, you don't have to touch it again at all because when we get the finalized EOB, we email that to your dental billing team as well as you, and they pick that right up where we left off and make sure that gets to the dental carrier if that's necessary. Wow. One magic question about this whole thing we've been talking about, do claims actually get paid? Is I, I bet that's the question that every doctor is waiting to hear. It is. It is. They do. So, they they do in two different senses of the word. So, there are the claims that get paid and you actually get a payment and that's outstanding and every that's you know what we want for the doctors we want to actually get them a payment there are the other claims where they get paid but they're applied to the patient's deductible or they're out of pocket but they are still paid nonetheless they are still processed and you are still getting an EOB to submit to the dental so either way you are getting a benefit for your patient that they might not get at another dental office even if there isn't a check payment coming from it, your patient will be ecstatic knowing that that was put towards their deductible. So maybe other treatment they need during that year will be covered and will be paid for and they won't have to pay out of pocket. And I wasn't trying to be funny when I asked that question because I remember having situations in our office when we had to do medical claims, but none of us knew how to do it. So, I felt and I saw the frustration in, in some of the ladies that were handling. I, I saw that they weren't speaking the same language to the customer service representative over on the medical side team. I just saw the energy shift whenever I would enter a room where those kinds of claims were being worked on. What could you say about that? It, it is frustrating. It's its own language. It's not It's not dentistry. It's not the same coding. And to have to, in addition to it not being the same procedure coding, now you're dealing with diagnosis codes, which most dentists don't ever deal with. So not only are you having to recode your procedures, but you're having to comb through thousands of codes to find out which medical conditions and symptoms apply to these procedures you're doing. And Dental personnel aren't trained for that, not to say that it's something that you couldn't, you know, you couldn't ever learn, but it is overwhelming and it's daunting to a dental, a dental team because it's a completely different language. And speaking with reps at the insurance companies is often the medical reps are more well-versed than the dental reps, and they will ask you for things like letters of medical necessity or pre-authorizations or they will ask you for accident reports. They will ask you, they'll ask you for things that we've never dealt with in dentistry. So it's just something that there is a specialty for billing for it. It's not your normal claim. And I think you hit that perfect point that I was going to make, that if something can be a, a dental necessity, but not a medical necessity. And the reason I asked that is because a patient comes in and will hand you that medical card and you know, you got the doctor's name on uh, you know, on the outside of the office, all over in, inside the waiting room, and it says Dr. Smith, right? Dr. Quintana. And the patient is doing the right thing. Hey, I go to my medical doctor, Dr. So-and-so, and here I come to Dr. Anderson, okay? They're both doctors. Why can't you take my medical card? And so, that's the question that, you know, that we all have, including the patients, is, you know, why is something a, you know, dental necessity, but not a medical necessity? To be honest, I can't answer that for you because I come from a school where we know that what goes on in your mouth with your oral health affects your entire body. We know that periodontal disease affects your heart. We know that having diabetes can cause you to have gum issues. We know that everything's connected. 
And there's still this huge rift between traditional medicine and dentistry where the two don't want to meet and they don't want to acknowledge that dental procedures are necessary to the health of the body. So we do still have basic procedures in dentistry that are not covered by medical, like cleanings and scaling and root planing, even though I I believe they should be. They aren't. So you do still have that rift, but it is closing. It is medical carriers and medical doctors are starting to acknowledge that not only do medical conditions have an impact on your dental health, but your dental health can have an impact on your medical health too. So that's why we're seeing a greater acceptance for implants and for crowns and for buildups and bridges because they understand that not having enough teeth to chew your food leads to poor digestive health and poor dietary conditions. So medical carriers are acknowledging that maybe patients do need implants covered under their medical so that they can chew their food. It's it's getting better than it was 10 years ago, but we do still have those procedures that are deemed dentally necessary that aren't going to be covered by medical. And this is the reason that I'm so happy uh, to be associated with a company like eAssist is because they're they're moving forward on cutting edge of everything that's happening out there, uh, like this process that you're talking about, things moving in that direction. Just think about the what we have done over the last few years, which is uh, help dental offices with their ELBs and posting them and all of the denied claims and verification of insurance. Now think about the clients that we try to help. These are clients that already have accounts receivable problems, you know, things in 90 days of of $200,000, over $200,000, right? And then they start getting into the medical issue of getting claims denied on top of the accounts receivable issue, that could put an office out of business. Would you agree? Yes, I I would agree, especially if you're a specialist and your bread and butter is procedures that require medical EOBs before the dental will pay. If If your staff doesn't have that knowledge and you don't bring on somebody that does, to take care of that, you're quickly going to find your AR going up and no way to collect on these dental claims because no matter how much you try to force the dental carriers to pay, they have hard and fast rules about requiring medical denials or requiring at least a medical EOB. I actually onboarded an office that had claims going back to 2015 that they couldn't get paid because they couldn't get the medical denials because they didn't know the ICD-10 codes to assign to their, they they didn't know what they were doing. Their software would send a medical form, but they didn't know how to fill it out. So these claims were in limbo as far as us getting them paid. And then you run into timely filing issues once you get past a certain point. Yeah, that's a great point right there. And then I go back to, you know, if you go back to episode 19 where we had Dr. Anderson on, you get to hear about why he founded, you know, eAssist, for example. He you know, he was having issues with his own aging reports. He was having, you know, weekly and monthly issues with his accounts receivables, right? And so he thought that he could solve a big problem in dentistry if he could help offices overcome some of the the failures that he was temporarily having. And and then he turned it around and found a solution and created a big success. Yeah, he, he did. He did. He made an amazing company that, that helps dentists. I mean, I, Dr. Anderson's like one of my favorite human beings now because not only is this company amazing to work for, but if I was an office manager anywhere and I had the opportunity to bring on eAssist, I would I in a heartbeat because the insurance AR, it's the time that it frees up for you to have somebody. And I've seen offices have huge growth in production because of the time that it frees up. I have two offices right now that are seeing tens of thousands of dollars in production growth because their office managers can treatment plan now and they can talk to patients and they can spend their time building a relationship with the community rather than chasing old collections. Yeah. 
All right. So this has been a great formative uh, episode. Uh, we haven't hit the, the, you know, the medical claims topic yet in depth like we have tonight. We're going to have two more questions for you. But before we do that, I just want to remind everybody that if you go to uh, dentalbilling.com or eassist.com, this is the best way for you to become familiar with all of the products and services that eAssist has to offer. And, and also, Stephanie, I have another important question for you, which is, how do all these services uh, that we've been talking about, how does this all apply in terms of ortho? That's a great question. I actually worked for an orthodontist for a number of years, and there are there are occasions where ortho is medically necessary. There are patients that have had cleft palate surgery. There are patients that have congenital anomalies. There are patients that have numerous congenitally missing teeth that require ortho before the teeth can be replaced. So there's a lot of occasions where medical billing is has its place in the ortho practice. And I've actually billed those claims to medical before with success. So it goes back to what I said that that medical billing can be used in every specialty, not just in the general practice, but in specialties that you wouldn't have guessed. Right. So dentalbilling.com, the phone number is 844-327-7478. 844-327-7478. Wow, Stephanie, this has been uh, such a great program. I don't know if you have anything else that you can give our audience about all of the services that you're getting involved with. Uh, is there anything else you can kind of let us know that's happening in the medical billing specialties? We are just making updates to our portal. We're, we're bringing on new practices and we're really excited to have a, we have some really great coders with us. Our lead, Melinda Wilhelm, our wonderful VP is actually a certified professional coder as well as a certified professional coding instructor. So I would just encourage every office, if you have anything that you think could be billed to medical, even if you don't, I would encourage you to contact Michelle and Monique in our sales department and just talk with them and talk with Melinda and see how we might be able to help your practice and your patients. Thank you for that. You know, I did have one more quick question. And the topic that's going to come up, you know, when every office uh, starts doing a lot more medical billing, when a dental insurance reaches the maximum, what happens then? Can the medical insurance be a supplement to it? You, it, can, it absolutely can. If the procedures that you're doing, and it can also reserve some of that dental insurance mm. maximum to help the patient pay for other procedures that might not be covered by the medical. So submitting to the medical first and saving that dental maximum can be a great option for patients because as most people aren't aware of, medical doesn't have a maximum. You might have a lifetime maximum of a million or $2 million, but medical doesn't have small yearly maximums that they hit. They will pay for claims until the patient is well or until the treatment's completed. Wow. That is such great information. Well, well, this has been a great episode for me personally, because uh, I can go back to our office and first let them know that if one day we can, you know, pick your brain, is, is that okay if uh, someone in my staff calls you up and asks questions? Is, is that always welcome? Absolutely. Absolutely. We always welcome questions. We always welcome doctors to come to us and say, do you think that this is a medical claim? Do you think that this is something that we should review? We, we love talking to the doctors and we love trying to be helpful to the practices. Well, Stephanie, this has been great. We love talking to you. You are so knowledgeable. You are, as I say, a rock star in dentistry. And I hope that you can come back for round three when some of the the new services are released with eAssist. I want to wish our audience a great week, Stephanie. I also want to give you the opportunity to say goodbye to our audience. And I want to wish you a great week as well. Thank you so much. I thank you for having me on again. Have a great night, everybody. Have a great night. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode of the eAssist Dental Solutions Podcast. We love to put the spotlight on the individuals for their outstanding work for our clients. 